pleasure to welcome to the show. It is Loyola starring goalie Luke Stout. Luke, how are we doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks again for having me. Appreciate yeah, this, being on. Of course. It's going to be tons of fun. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, we're mid-season, so, you know, take taking some time out of the uh, – uh, the busy schedule. I know you guys just just played a game and have been running the gauntlet, but uh, we're going to talk lacrosse goalie today, and I'm pumped. So uh, I always start with the story of uh, the very first save. You remember jumping into the goal for the very first time? I do. Yeah, it was it was a while ago. I, I started actually somewhat late, I think, compared to most goalies. Um, I started in third grade. Um, you know, just a, a winner kind of pickup rec team uh, with, with my with my dad's friend was our coach. And, uh, you know, we, we weren't very good <laughs> and I wasn't very good. Um, but my first save I would probably have that I at least remember was, uh, we were playing, a um, a team. It was actually, they had some older guys, maybe two, two, three years older than us. I don't even know how they were in the same league and kids stepped in for probably six yards <laughs> and hit me right in the thigh. I didn't move. Of course I didn't, I didn't do anything spectacular. And that was really the first time I got hit and I went down <laughs> and, uh, you know, from that point, from that, at that point, I was kind of like, uh, what am I, uh, you know, am I in the right, right profession here? What, what am I doing here? And and my mom was like, you know, you're not quitting, you know, you're not quitting. You're she, that happened a couple of times throughout my career. And I was glad I obviously never did. Cause it, it, I think it turned out pretty, pretty good so far. <laughs> so that's, that's probably awesome. the first notable. That's awesome. It reminds me of my, my very first save, very similar um, to where like they took a, a crank shot and like, I didn't even move, but it hit me square in the, <laughs> Square in the helmet. But then I was hooked. I was hooked because everyone's like, yeah, Damon, way to go. And I'm like, all right, all right. I'm liking this. I'm liking that feeling. It's it's yeah. a pretty good feeling uh, as a lacrosse goalie, you know, that you get when you make a save, right? Talk to me a little bit about that. Oh, it's it's especially for me in, in, in kind of be, the beginning of the game, you know, but really anytime you make, you make a save, it's it's just it kind of blocks out or erases all the bad stuff, you know, in my opinion, that kind of happens. And um you know, uh, me personally, I almost like getting hit, phys- you know, just, just one in the body, you know, early on, cause it kind of wakes you up a little bit. It kind of, for me, it kind of just snaps you into game mode, you know, so to speak. I, I've kind of been like that since high school. I'm not, I'm not too sure why. Um, but, uh, you know, I, it's, it's, and, you know, like you said, it kind of, for me, at least it kind of brings the rest of the team into it. You know, the bench kind of gets into it. Um, you know, your defenders, they can kind of settle down a little bit cause they know that you're in the game and, you know, they can play a little more relaxed. So, you know, all in all, it's, it's a great feeling. It's, it's why I'm still doing it. <laughs> that's right. That's why I was still doing it. Um, that's awesome. So third grade, you grew up in uh, like, like sort of upstate New York, like close to Syracuse. Yeah. So I imagine tons of lacrosse going on um, when you kind of realize, Hey, I want to, I want to be a goalie. I want to not rely on um, just getting hit in the thigh. Like I want to be more active and making the saves. Like how do you go about learning, the the position yeah so for me i you're right yeah i grew up um uh, just outside of syracuse new york i grew up i went to west Tennessee high school um which you know uh has, has had some really good tradition um some of the best players went there especially goalies guys like john galloway and um you know my high school goalie coach is probably one of the i was incredibly lucky i think he's for my money probably one of the best you know of all time just some of the guys he's coached and you know I, I was lucky enough to kind of get moved up and, and be able to be kind of begin practicing with those varsity guys when I was in, I think going into the summer of my eighth grade year. Um, so I was, I was with him pretty early and, you know, he kind of established a, a really good base and a good set of fundamentals that I still kind of go back to today. Um, so, you know, for me, I think I was pretty lucky sort of in that respect, but I think for, for goalies, you know, guys girls you know whatever age you know I think one thing that that always helps is just going and watching other goalies play you know for me I had a you know I had one or two that I really modeled my game after but you know I just love sitting down even if it's you know college guys today just just watching how other guys play you know their base their arc you know how high is their top hand um and trying to pick up on little things maybe you know not just how they make the save but what are they doing you know during the you know prior to the save you know, how are they communicating all that sort of stuff? I think film is, is the absolute best way to, um, you know, especially guys you like, you know, or girls you like, you know, you can kind of take from them what, you know, you think is applicable and, you know, you don't have to take everything, you know, it's not, it doesn't have to be a wholesale thing, but you kind of take little pieces from, from different goalies. Uh, That's one of my favorite parts about the position. Mine too. Mine too. I a hundred percent agree with you on that. And I, I, um, 
consider it an honor that I get to coach lacrosse goalies full time and just watch lacrosse all day. So like, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. And I hope that, I mean, to, to the young goalies, like the more that you can fall in love with that and just the sport and the position and watching it, uh, like the, the more you're going to learn and the better you're going to be. So it sounds like we share that, share that, uh, attribute did you watch the luke stout save edit uh by the way that was a good one yes i I love that (laughs) that was that was great i uh that's well that's i would say that's probably a resource honestly that i enjoyed the most you know especially last year because it's so hard to find you know goalie high you really can't find goalie highlights so for me i would before that i would have sit down and watch a full game and you know fast forward when they're on defense but those are those actually were huge last year just kind of picking out and watching guys that i like watching and stuff it's pretty cool yeah uh so west west genesee high school where the west jenny drill comes from yeah yes Yes, you guys run a lot of west jenny drill are you are you (laughs) (laughs) we we did it every day we we did it every day in high school at the end of practice and um it was a fun drill and of course we we got to college and didn't do it a ton we actually never really did it and then this past year we did it once for the first time and, uh, and, and, you know, since I've been at Loyola and it was like, geez, this drill's hard. It's not an easy drill on goalies. It's, no wonder we haven't done it in college. Yeah. That's wonder probably why I'm going in high school. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, who's your, who's your high school goalie coach that you mentioned had coached so many great uh, goalies? Uh, my high school goalie coach, I played for Mike Masser and, and my goalie coach was his assistant coach and, and defensive coordinator, Bob D and, um, he coached, you know, so many guys at Western and going back to the nineties, you know, guys like Zoan Eddie, um, you know, who played at Rutgers to John Galloway, a bunch of older guys all in between. And, um, he actually, the, so he retired after my sophomore year, um, of high school. And then for two years, he went and was Dom Sarge's assistant coach, um, for the, uh, I think it was the Chrome team, PLL Chrome. And he worked with John Galloway there and, you know, mm-hmm. Scanoni and all the goalies up there. So, He's uh he's you know coached high school and then he's he spent time he was a volunteer at SUNY Cortland too coached some of the goalies so he's high school college pros you know he's kind of done it all so um he was coach, been... coach Deegan yeah he he's on my email list he, he'll uh, every time I send yeah. out emails he'll reply back every once in a while so he's awesome we we uh yeah. we, ch- we chat goalie as well so he's great yeah he's a big um, fan I know he's talked about you before <laughs> he's a big yeah. fan. He's yeah, awesome. I, I've never met him. Um, I think we spoke on the phone once. I called him just because he we had we'd been going back and forth so much. But uh, one day we got to get Coach Deegan on the podcast, huh? <laughs> I agree. He would be yeah. an awesome one for sure. He's got a lot, so much knowledge and all that yeah. stuff. Um, I'd love to do that. So talk to me a little bit about uh your style and how it's progressed. Um, you know, you mentioned kind of watching yeah. different goalies and you know, picking things of like their arc play and you know, maybe their stance with width of the feet, where they hold the top hand. Uh, talk to me about you know your style and kind of how maybe it's changed over the years. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, in high school, I was, you know, when I was with the coach, you know, I was definitely I was I I call it more conservative. You know, I I would sit pretty tall, dec- decently tall. Um, I would play decently shallow. Um you know, really good angle play. I would kind of play it like an, almost like a triangle arc um, without much of a triangle, if that makes sense. Um, so even when the ball was top center, I wouldn't be super high up. Mm. Um, you know, one thing coach kind of really, you know, stressed upon us was, was our angle play, you know, and, and how, you know, that happy medium between being maybe too shallow where there's a ton of net to shoot at and not overextending yourself, you know, and kind of, um, you know, being out of position because of it. Um, so in high school, I think my biggest attribute was kind of just angle play and being really disciplined on the pipes. Um, you know, I would punch out my bottom hand, you know, um, all that good stuff. And and now I think as, as college, you know, as I began to play more in college, you know, the, the shooters, are, they're just so much better, you know, across the board. And there's good talent in upstate, but, you know, Division One ball is a whole different animal. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, working with Coach Toomey, who's also, you know, I think one of the best in the business, you know. Yeah. I become, you know, I find myself playing a little bit higher up these days, um, sitting a little bit lower. Um, but for me, that just gives me sort of a, as long as I don't dip my, my top hand, I like to keep my, my, my top thumb kind of eye level, even in a lower stance. Um, but you know, I find that in a slightly lower crouch, I can explode up the ball easier. And I can also, you know, I'm closer to the ground so I can just snap my, you know, I've got decently fast hands, I would think. So I can, I can kind of karate chop down, you know, in that lower stance. So I would say I play a little bit higher now. Uh, maybe you'll sit a little bit lower in um, my stance, but, um, you know, coach, all the basics kind of overlap, right? Staying disciplined on the pipes, 
you know, um, uh, catching the ball is a huge one, you know, all that good stuff. So that would say is sort of my, my journey so far. And plus, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't really have a senior year of high school either. Um, so, you know, I kind of went from a junior year, you know, uh, of high school ball to freshman year of college where I didn't even get fall ball. So I almost had to kind of, in a sense, almost reteach myself kind of the position if, if that makes any sense. Cause you know, goalie is kind of rhythmic. You got to keep doing it and 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 you kind of get better as you go on. And if you don't play for a year and a half, <laughs> you got to go back to the drawing board a little bit. So, yeah, well, I, the same could kind of be said if you don't play for like six months, sometimes, you know, like, yeah. like any sort of extended absence, you know, you sprain an ankle and you're out for a month yeah. and a half, like, or, or an extended period. And then you come back and then you get, yeah, you got to get back into the flow of it um, yeah. and get used to just that, you know, those can, those, those cannons coming at you. <laughs> um, Cause it's not, <laughs> you know, it's not comfortable, but, but you certainly, your body gets used to it to the point where like, all right, now I'm not flinching or now like I'm, I'm seeing it and I'm just making a pure reaction and not even thinking about my save movements. I'm just going for it. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was a change for sure. <laughs> I was going to ask, is that, um, so one of the great Loyola goalies, Jake Stover, right? Yeah. Um, you know, who I watch. And he had that very similar style where he was kind of down, like in a crouch, but his hands were like pretty high. Is that, does yeah. coach to me, like, does he let you kind of just, just do whatever you want style wise, or is that something specifically he, he preaches? Uh, you know, I think, I think a little bit of both, you know, he, he does such a good job with kind of having a set structure, you know, in a system that we should kind of abide by, but also giving us some wiggle room based on our own, you know, body types and, you know, styles of play and stuff. So, you know, one thing he always preaches is, you know, ideally trying to keep that, that, that um, top of the lacrosse head, you know, right under the pipe, you know, mm -hmm. um, and obviously you can't be perfect with that, you know, in a game, you're not looking back just to make sure, <laughs> but if you kind of use that as a, you know, kind of a, just a general rule of thumb, you know, I found that, um, you know, uh, doing that, you know, keep, for me at least kind of keeping that thumb by my eye has kind of allowed me to focus more on the shooter and, and, and the release point of the, of the ball. I don't know if there's anything to that or if, if it's just, you know, placebo or whatever, but um, you know, that's something he's kind of always preached. And, and again, as a bigger goalie, you know, so, uh, you know, you'll hear a lot of times and I'm not even that tall. I'm only six foot one, but you know, on, on goalies even taller than me that, you know, the scout is shoot low, right. Shoot low on big goalies. Um, but if you're already kind of halfway down there, um, you know, it's so I feel it's almost so much easy, easier for you to just snap that top hand down than sit really tall and kind of let really gravity, so to speak, just bring you down and, you know, flop on the ground, you know, mm. and you can also, I think you from easily that position kind of explode up high, you know, you can control how fast you get there. Um, so yeah, that, well, I think that is coached to an extent for sure. Interesting. It's one of those things where, you know, if it works for one goalie and it doesn't work for you, like, that's fine. Like, there's some wiggle room there. Because I know some goalies who start with that top hand pretty high. And then when you watch the tape, like, the first thing they do, right, is they come down into, into a more, like, I don't know, what's more comfortable for them. But as a lacrosse goalie, you cannot come in and come out like that. You that know, we're talking milliseconds, and you just lost two milliseconds. And that's the difference between a save and a goal. Like you have to make a, a straight line movement from a to B. Um, and, and, but you can do that, you know, with the top hand here, you can do that with the top hand here. It's just a matter of uh, your comfort level. Right. Yeah. I think that's funny. You mentioned that I actually did that. I, I you know, I used, that was kind of in high school, one of my maybe knocks, so to speak, I would sometimes, you know, kind of drop either come in or drop my hands, but, you know, I guess, you know, glass half full thing I realized was that if I did start high and drop my hands, you know, on, on a low to high, say, you know, someone drops their hands and goes low to high, you know, coach to me always talks about kind of staying big, not, not, not dipping that top hand. And I found that if you maybe start not even a little bit higher than normal, but if you kind of start eye level and you dip, you're still kind of here. Rather, if you start here and you dip, all of a mm -hmm. sudden you're, you're almost at your hip <laughs> or, you know, so, right. you know, it's, everyone's got their own thing, I guess, but yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I love it. Um, anything else that's changed in your, in your style of play since arriving at, at Loyola? Um, yeah, I would say just, just, I just, I would say more of an attacking style, to be honest with you, coach mm. Toomey, you know, I think that's kind of a reflection of how he played, you know, when he was, you know, in college, he, he was a really explosive goalie. And, you know, like I said, in high school, I would rely a ton on, on my hands and kind of just 
sitting sort of at the goal line and, and kind of sitting on that, that fast top hand and just karate chopping towards the ball. Now I think, you know, coach talks about every day, this idea of a challenger shooter. I think I do a really, or a much better job because <laughs> I didn't really do it much in high school um, of, of kind of not only playing a little bit higher, but also, you know, stepping on that 45 degree angle um, and, 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 and using my body if I need to, you know, especially in tight, you know, sometimes in high school, I would sit there and just try to maybe snap my top hand where now, you know, I can make that full step and, 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 you know, step on a 45, follow up with my back foot and hopefully catch the ball too. So I think I, I've just right. done a better job attacking the ball and, and um, also maybe in the clearing game too, you know, that's kind of an under talked about thing, but in high school, I would, you know, I was, I was, I grew up probably the number one goal I grew up watching was John Galloway. And, uh, you know, I love to make a save and get the ball, just, you know, get the ball out on the field. And even if it wasn't there, you know, kind of sitting there for however long and making a pass, you know, 40 yards on the field. Now I've become more disciplined going into my three man, you know, utilizing our defensemen. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be me, the one that's making the pass, <laughs> you know, across the midline. So I would say that, that aspect as well. Yeah, I think a lot of young goalies struggle with the clearing game. Um, you know, and you, you talk so much about saves and making saves and saves this and saves that. And then, you know, your clearing game stinks. And guess what? You're right back on defense. And it's such a it's such a um, momentum shift, right? Because you just ha had a great save and then you give, you give the ball back. And it's like, oh, man, especially if they score. So how do you um, – what would you say would be some tips that you have for youth goalies if they want to uh, practice their clearing game? Yeah. So I would say, you know, I would say I would split it in kind of two categories and say, you know, during, you know, things to kind of think about during a clear and obviously like to your point, kind of how you can practice maybe on your own time, but during a clear, I always love to look, you know, for an easy way, you know, to kind of just get the ball out fast, look where the shot came from, right. The oldest, all this, all this one of the book kind of start there and scan across. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other thing I would say is, is during a clear is tr trust your defenseman, you know, to trust your defenseman, um, you know, go into your three, man, you know, you have more time than you think nine times out of 10, um, you know, so, so, so trust that they're going to make the right decisions and talk them through it, you know, and that kind of comes with watching film and being prepared. Um, and that's kind of where it would overlap with that other aspect I mentioned, you know, in terms of what you can do, you know, um, maybe off the field. And, you know, just working on, I think for me at a younger age, again, lucky, lucky I was with coach Deegan, you know, harping on just throwing fundamentals, you know, um, you know, bringing that bottom hand across tall top arm, all that good stuff, you know, just it may, if you're confident throwing the ball and, 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 you know, whether that's playing wall ball with a short stick or, you know, filming yourself, just throw a ball down the field like I did, um, you know, or, you know, whatever it is for you playing with your offhand, making sure that, you know, the fundamentals throwing the ball are, are good. You know, that's one thing in high school coach was Sarah always talked about, you know, we would, we would have to do every stick drill, uh, our stick work drill. We would have to put it in our, I'm a lefty so I'd have to put it in my right hand. I didn't have to play goalie with my right hand sometimes. Um, yeah. And I think that helped me so much and John Galloway, both, you know, so much in the clearing game. So be confident in your stick and then watch film. That's another thing. And, I say that because I love film probably a little more than the average <laughs> goalie, but it's so helpful and it applies in the clearing game too. Yeah. Well, that's a great breakdown, right? It's like understand the strategy of the clear or like to just have a game plan in your head, you know, once you make the save and, and, you know, a good 50% of the time, like, like you said, you know, the, the, wherever the shot came from that midi, your defending midi is going to be wide open. Because you know attackers yeah. shoot and they watch, right? Yep. <laughs> um, no, and, and your and your midi has, has <clears throat> you know slipped behind them and boom, that's a simple little lob pass. So know the strategy. Uh, uh, be comfortable with the stick, right? And that, to yep, me, that's 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 outlets, like throwing yep. all the passes. I mean, it's just like the NFL quarterback. Like, can you make all the throws? Right? <laughs> exactly. Can you make all the throws? Um, and then also a dodge. I'd say you know having a dodge or two in your arsenal is yep. like it's just up here. Like I know if like all right. There's an attackman riding me, and I need to throw. Uh, you know, I had one bread and bread and butter dodge that I used, the face dodge, where I kept it kept it out here, yeah. and the attackman would just always go for yeah. it, and then every time bring it right across, and every time they, you know, I'd get them every time, and sometimes you got to look back and give them a little look, like, oh, yeah. what's up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. I love that in high school. Yeah. No, yeah. That's anyway, funny. that's kind of a, a breakdown. When you said go to my three man, you're talking about just the uh, you know your your defenders that break out to the wings. 
Yeah, I should have specified. Yeah, that's what we call it a loyal. I, I should have specified that. And I guess nowadays, sometimes, you know, if we'll see college teams where it's more of a two man where the goalie will, instead of having two defensemen and a goalie, the defenseman will rotate up and it'll just be a goal, you know, a goalie and <laughs> the other defenseman. And yeah. that's really more two man. And like you said, you really got to be confident in your stick because you're making that pass is probably a little extra uh, long, you know, and, and you might have tack and down pressing you. But yeah, be comfortable with your stick and be comfortable with your throwing fundamentals because that's that's that that's really kind of the foundation 100 yeah. percent my opinion yeah and the other thing i'll throw in there is you know for the youth goal is is make sure you got a, a well-strung stick uh yeah. you know i i played with this there's a the stick i played with in college back here and now like i got a bunch of sticks from mr wonderful and i'm like i can't believe i play even played in a game with this thing <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh i know i had some bad ones in high school i don't know how i got away with it even to right. this day, it's still that's a goal. I know what my I always say my biggest mistake, and I guess to add on that, you know, if you can and you're you're still in high school or middle school, learn how to string. You know, I would even say that much because I never, I never did. I I love the sport. Some say I'm kind of a cross junkie, and the one thing I never did was learn how to string. And so even to this day, it's a constant battle with you know goalie maintenance and you know going to one of my teammates, Seth Higgins, kind of strings all our sticks. You string this? Oh, you just gave me one two weeks ago. You know, <laughs> so. Yeah, learn how to string and be confident in, in whatever you got for sure. Yeah. I um I was like you, where like I never knew how to string. And then about a month ago, I'm like, all right, that's it. Like I'm gonna learn. So I I went out and got like all of the, you know, watched all the videos and the tutorials and everything. And I I I strung one. I'll give myself a solid C minus, <laughs> but like that's where it starts, right? Yeah, it was never pretty early on, <laughs> but you gotta yeah. practice hundred percent. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm next time you do will be better. Yeah, maybe that'll be my summer. My it should be honestly my summer project. That would that would be a game changer. All right. <laughs> sure. Well, if if you uh, search on YouTube, I did a tutorial of it. Okay. Because actually, one thing, if you try and like teach somebody to do something, like if you have to explain it, like you learn it so much better um, than just doing yeah. it. You know what I mean? So I, I recorded everything and put on on YouTube. That'll be a resource, uh, Luke. Check that out. <laughs> no, definitely. I will. I, there's yeah. some good ones. I will. Yeah. Um, well, very cool. So kind of back to your story. Um, you know, what, uh, talk to me about the the recruiting process. Um, you, you know, you mentioned not having a senior year. That was the COVID year. Um, but but you had, you had committed before that. Yeah, during your junior yes. year. So talk to me yeah, about yeah. that process and why you ultimately went with Loyola. <sighs> Yeah, you know, I, you know, it, for me, it was sort of crazy. I, I kind of think about my recruitment in two different stages, you know, because early on it was, you know, it was the era of the, you know, eighth, ninth grade, you know, uh, commits, you know, early recruits and all that, all that good stuff. Yeah. And uh, I played for Sweet Lax, which is obviously a pretty good, you know, we were a pretty good club team and you know, I was really fortunate to play with some really good players. And so, you know, coaches would, would watch us, you know, at eight, you know, in eighth grade, really going into my ninth grade year and, you know, I'd read, you know, gotten a lot of attention early on. And then, you know, I never forget, I had a phone call with Yale, you know, in, in, in fall or maybe early winter, my ninth grade year. And then, you know, they put the rule down, <laughs> um, you know, that you, you couldn't, uh, you know, communicate until I think the, uh, September 1st, right? The junior year. Right. So then I kind of talked to all these schools and then didn't talk to, and, you know, had, you know, some of them I, you know, had, uh, you know, not committed to, but had really good relationships with. And then all of a sudden I didn't talk to anybody for like a year and a half. And then, um, September 1st came and, you know, I was lucky, you know, I got, I got a good bit of attention and, you know, was lucky to talk to some great schools and, you know, in the end, you know, um, obviously, you know, Syracuse is always enticing, you know, as the hometown school, I grew up watching them play mm -hmm. for so many years. And of course, you know, so many West Jenny guys had gone there and been successful. Um, so Syracuse was, was always up there. Um, uh, and then, you know, Loyola. Loyola was somewhere where that, you know, if I had told myself three years ago that I'd be playing here, or not three years, I guess, you know, freshman, sophomore year, high school, that I'd be playing at Loyola, I wouldn't have really thought about it. I always had so much respect for the program, but I didn't really know a ton about it. And coming down here and visiting, you know, Coach Toomey was, uh, you know, he was probably as, as – he was probably – you know, I was lucky to talk to some great coaches, but he was probably my favorite coach because of his honesty. Um, he was obviously a great goalie and, you know, it kind of felt like a second home, so to speak, right. It, it, him and I's relationship. And, um, 
you know, he told me he would develop me. He would coach me hard. Um, but he would, at the end of the day, he would always do what's in my best interest, you know, on and off the field. And, um, you know, trust is a huge thing for me. And I think kind of that element, it's obviously, you know, a great school, great business school, which is what, you know, my major is, um, campus is beautiful. Um, but also kind of the, the focus around lacrosse, I thought was incredibly unique. You know, as these other schools, like, you know, Syracuse, Notre Dame, Penn state, you know, Duke, I mean, they're all, you know, incredible tradition themselves and their incredible lacrosse programs themselves, but the school, you know, it's not quite, you know, there, you know, you have 10,000 kids there. It's, you know, not all 10,000 kids, you know, uh, are kind of revolving around lacrosse, you know, at Loyola, it feels like it's one big kind of community and everyone comes out to support the team. And I thought that was a really unique element too. Um, so at the end of the day, you know, so then I come into Loyola, um, and that was, uh, that was amazing experience. And, um, uh, you know, my senior year came by, I probably had my best, um, funny enough, my best, um, you know, club season that summer going into my senior year. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, you know, they, you know, other schools, you know, reach back out just because you're committed doesn't mean that, you know, that they're, they're going to stop reaching out. So I had a few other schools that I, um, you know, respected incredibly, you know, reach back out. And, um, at the end of the day, you know, I kind of, the loyalty is a big thing for me and, to trust coach to me showed in me early on kind of was enough for me to, to stay locked in. And I think it's the best decision I've ever made. Awesome. Awesome. You mentioned uh, you respected coach to um honesty. What is that? Uh, I'd love to hear more about that. Does that mean kind of he'll hit, hit you with some hard truths, hit you with some uncomfortable conversations <laughs> that you need to hear, but are, are honest or what, what exactly does that mean? Yeah. Uh, well, I think at the time, you know, so much of the recruiting game and, you know, well, you could do a whole podcast just on recruiting advice. I'm sure you have and stuff. It's such a crazy, you know, up and down experience. Mm -hmm. um, but so many coaches and, you know, they're, they're all great people, you know, and, and they're all really good at what they do, but uh, you know, it, it's, there's always a level of a sale, right? It's, it's, it's essentially, you're trying to make a sale to a kid. You're trying to convince a kid, you know, how they would help you out. And uh, yeah, that's completely in there. You know, they're right. And, you know, honestly, I had no bad decisions, you know, um, you know, Penn State, Yale, Duke, Syracuse, Brown. I mean, I, I, I'd be, those programs are all incredible, you know, and, and the coaching staffs are, are equally as incredible, but, you know, with coach Toomey, I felt, you know, a certain level of, 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 um, like I said, honesty, but there's probably a better word for it. He was a straight shooter, you know, and there was no, he wasn't telling me anything, you know, kind of just to get me there. And then, yeah. you know, he, who I was half the time, you know, he, there was a, there was an element of, you know, him wanting me there because he thought I would be a person that would have elevated the character of the team, you know, not just a, another piece, you know, on, on the X's and O's board. And for me, you know, that having the relationship I did with my coaches in high school, you know, that was incredibly important. And, I think you're to the other aspect of what you said. He was, he's definitely a straight shooter in the sense of, you know, um, he'll tell you if you're not just the other night, you know, we won a game in overtime, he, you know, Hey, you make sure, you know, you got to do this a little better and you know, this a little better. You know, he's always, he's always coaching you. He's always your biggest critic. And, and, and honestly, as hard as it can be, that's, that's, that's how you become a better goalie. So. Love it. Love it. Well, Coach Toomey's got got the team rolling. Uh, we're film, we're recording this on uh, on March third, and you guys are you guys are uh, three and one, three and one, three and one, and running no. the gauntlet, right? Maryland, Hopkins, yeah. Rutgers. Uh, it's tough tough start to the season, you know, right out of the gate. But you guys you guys are looking really good out there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's I mean, opening with three teams, the Big Ten. That's obviously never easy, especially your first three games. Maryland's obviously an incredible program and and so is Rutgers and Hopkins and Towson. Um, you know, we kind of knew last night going into Towson that that's always sort of a dog fight, you know, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it was coach Natalie does such a good job coaching those guys to be scrappy and they're very well coached. And, uh, and it was at Towson. So they had a little extra juice and we pulled a close one out and, and we were lucky to, cause they're a great team and, and, and competed their butts off. So now we got Lafayette and, and that's a program that's gotten better and better each year, you know, at least that I've been here. So that'll be another fun one. Hopefully we can keep it rolling. Yeah. Keep it rolling. Let's go. Um, talk to me about, I think you mentioned, you know, Galloway was a big, uh, 
you know, influence or, or someone you kind of love to watch play? What are, what are there some other goalies now in the pros or maybe that were in college back when you <clears throat> learned the position that you really enjoyed watching? Oh, definitely. <clears throat> yeah, I would say I would say there were there were at least three to four. I would say John Galloway was a, <clears throat> you know, was a big one, at least at an early age. And, you know, that's one who Coach Deegan would always kind of point to as an example. You know, John would always do this and, you know, this. And <laughs> you would, you know, hand out, you know, before uh, – I guess it wasn't before, you know, huddle or whatever, but he would give out and coach him and coach Sir would give out like these discs. Yeah. I forget what they are, you know, like the, I don't know, you, you put them into your TV and, and uh, like the Blu-ray disc and it would pop up and it would be, you know, John, you know, him playing in high school. And, and I would go back ninth, 10th grade, pop those in and watch, watch his games forever. And um, I think, you know, I've used to play people, people would say, cause I was also 15 in high school. And then people would say we looked exactly sort of alike. I just was left-handed. Um, so I guess my mannerisms and the clearing game and stuff like that early on, he would be the big one. Um, but I would also say, especially since I graduated high school, I love watching Tillman Johnson um, and trying to kind of copy some of what he did. I thought his angle play was incredible, how he kind of kick-started the clearing game incredibly well. Um, he might be one of the best ball stoppers I've ever watched him probably – Scott Bosch Galupo, another one. Um, I actually enjoyed his podcast with you <laughs> um, a while back. He was another one. I, I, I couldn't really and, and haven't really been able to emulate his playing style too much because he was sort of unorthodox, but he was a guy I loved watching play, how he would yeah. almost bait people to shoot low because he would sit so tall. Um, so I would say, um, I would say, though, I would say Tillman Johnson and John Galloway were two big ones. And then people since have told me, you know, hey, you play a lot like, the two I've heard that I play a lot like is, is Jay Pfeiffer, Jay Pfeiffer, 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 I think at Syracuse mm -hmm. and um, Chris Saran also at Syracuse and other guys. So I've gone back and kind of watched them and, you know, I was like, I maybe guess I kind of do a little bit. So I've kind of started studying them a little more too. So those are, I'd say would be the big four that I've All right. watched. Well, the legends, the legends, <laughs> uh, you can't play like, <clears throat> you can't play like batch played, uh, nowadays. Yeah. Uh, he, I mean, he's like stand up totally for even batch on the podcast said like, there's no, you can't play like I played. It was just a different, <laughs> you know, yeah. kids can shoot so hard now and like the ball moves so way faster and it's just, it's different sports. So, um, <laughs> One of the things Galloway was was known for is that, you know, after making a save, like he's, you know, he's he's hype man. He's he's getting the team into it. Is that your personality as well? Or after you make a save, are you like, let's go, boy? Are you really firing the, the guys up? Yeah, that's how. Uh, yeah. Uh, in high school, I was always that way, kind of. And I actually kind of got that from him and, and, and from watching him play so much. And and then, you know, another thing with the COVID year, I mean, you take a break from lacrosse and you come back and you're just, a, you know, a freshman or you're just a sophomore or whatever. And it's not really your team, so to speak, you know, especially, you know, I had a great goalie in front of me. Sam Schaefer was, was a tremendous you know, fifth year guy and it was his fifth year defenders. And, you know, so you, you kind of lose it's, or at least it's hard not to keep that sort of element of leadership, I guess. Um, but I think this past year, you know, with, with, you know, me having the opportunity to kind of get the job, um, that's kind of been rekindled a little bit. And, you know, now during, you know, I did it a lot during scrimmages and, you know, I've done it, you know, in every regular season game, even in practice, you know, it's important to kind of be consistent doing it, you know, you know, watching games on TV announce yourself fired up. It looks like I'm, I'm going crazy, you know, <laughs> just cause you know, it's, it's a little play, but I'm kind of, you know, swinging my arms around or yelling, yelling and stuff. And, but, it, but even if it's a play, you know, even if it's just stop on defense, you know, I think that that kind of not only ignites a defense, it, 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 it prescribes their trust in you a little bit. I think that, you know, you kind of got their backs and you're willing to kind of compliment them and bring them up after a good play. And coach Toomey, you know, he's as energetic of a, a coach as you'll find. And that's how he coaches goalies. You know, so that's something he also preaches, bringing energy, bringing energy. He calls it urgency, you know, play with some urgency, you know, in between the whistles. So um, I think that's incredibly important for, for even young goalies, you know, especially in the recruiting process. You know, if you're, you, you're, you know, you're playing club ball and, you know, a lot of times it's just, you know, roll the ball out and, you know, who can make the coolest split save and, you know, who's got the coolest stick and all that stuff. But, you know, in my experience, coaches really kind of double, you know, double check their, their, their sheets when they see a goalie, you know, get back up out of a shot and kind of clear the ball and fire his defense up a little bit. So, yeah, I love what you said right there. Right. 
there's a lot of goalies that come on and have the mindset of like even keel. Like I'm not going to get too high, but then I'm not going to get too low. And that's not, I don't, that's not me. Like I, I personally, like, like you, you know, you chase a shot out and you don't give like a big fist pump or you don't do like a nice gesture or, or like a shout of like, let's go. Like you're losing an opportunity to really fire up the team, right? It's a lost opportunity. And if I go high, like to me, it doesn't make me go low. Like that's just not how I work. Like, uh, you exactly. know, so yeah, I'm, I'm like you. And, and like you said, to your point, you know, defenders want to play for someone who's fun and energetic and like, you know, gets, gets the juices going. Right. And so you, and by doing that, you know, you are the goalie that the defenders want to play for. Um, and I think yeah. that's incredibly important. Absolutely. Yeah. I, it goes to, you know, I agree exactly with the point, you know, there's no reason you can't always be, you know, sort of on, on a high, right. There's no reason that it should be this. You should just kind of always, and honestly, for me, coach Toomey says, you know, use, use the game to warm up. Right. And it's kind of just, and as the game goes on, you're kind of just building, building that intensity, building that rhythm, building that confidence. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if, if not, if you're kind of always doing this, then I think you need to go back and, and think about maybe the way you prepare, you know, that's, that's kind of how I go back then too. Right. Um, and every goal is different, true, you know, right. different personalities. That's another thing, but right. hundred percent. What do you do though, in those games where you give up four in a row, you give up five in a row, you have a little, you know, a little, little routine you go through, you got some sort of mindsets, uh, mental game things that really help yeah um i i guess it's i never really thought about it as a as a list or a process but i guess it sort of is um first thing you know it, usually yeah, i guess if it's after three goals or, or for definitely four goals first thing i do you know leave the ball bring in your know, defense and calm everybody down you know say all right it's, we're gonna be all right take a deep breath right it's not a big deal they're a good team they're gonna go on runs and at division one level that's honestly that that's the truth of it you know these two offenses right. are so good that they're going to go on runs so, you know we're talking about maryland or Rutgers, you know um so that's the first thing you got to get those guys calm you got to keep make sure that they can keep their composure because once they get going mentally you know then they start to, you know they start sliding when they're not supposed to or they're not thinking and really defense is a thinking position you've got to know where to be at the right time so i would say kind of calm them down bring them in make sure they have their composure um, and then I would kind of honestly, you know, in those moments, you know, kind of take a second to walk and just think about breathing is as goofy as that might sound. Think about your breathing. Um, you know, for sometimes I'll just stare, you know, I'll, I'll kind of crush on just stare at a piece of turf and breathe, you know, kind of just reset a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's a really important thing, at least for me, you know, cause I, that's, like I said, sort of a mental reset and kind of gets you back into that flow state, you know, um, and another thing that I did and I haven't done yet in the game, but I'll do during practice. I'll, and this is a little, you know, a uh, little different, but I would, I would wear a rubber band around my wrist and just kind of just pull it and snap it. And after each goal, the reset, um, that's one, uh, a loyal goalie, um, Tim McGinney actually showed me that and, and made a huge difference in the fall, you know, when I was competing for the job and early in the spring, you know, so that's something I love doing. So those would be kind of my two or three big things that has worked well so far. Love it. Um, I'm just starting to realize how many Loyola goalies I've had on the podcast. I had McGinney. Uh, I'll have to look up what up. I had had Sam Schaefer, had Jake Stover. We, we might be pushing Lo Loyola right up there in the top top three number of goalies on, on the podcast. <laughs> I love it. I've been lucky. There's been so many good ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Um, well, awesome. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what uh, what a practice looks like for, for you guys, for you goalies. If you could. Yeah. So I, I think a big reason that, you know, um, you know, we've had so much good goalie, so many good goalies. I think over the years, coach Toomey's been coaching. It's just like, I think a big part of the practice and the intensity of it, you know um, we come out, <clears throat> you know, generally an average day. <clears throat> um, I'll actually, you know, it's one thing I like doing and have done during the season is coming early and getting shots, you know, asking, you know, Ryan McNulty is our director of lacrosse operations. He's, he's awesome. And he's willing to go and shoot anytime. So I'm kind of lucky there to have someone, but I would tell any goalie of any age, you know, it's not, you hear it all the time. Practice makes perfect, but it's, it's, it's true, especially as goalie, you know, whether it's using tennis balls, so you're not getting bruised up or whatever you got to do, 
but getting getting shots and finding that happy medium um, of reps just to get you seeing the ball is is so important so important you can't substitute that um and so on a perfect day i'll come to practice early you know and, and get maybe 10 to 20 minutes of shots nothing too crazy to, to kind of so you're tired for practice but just enough to get you seeing the ball and just kind of get your confidence going um and then practice will come and we'll go out there and we get warmed up and the way we warm up is probably a little bit different than than how a lot of goalies do and it's definitely different than a lot of college programs because coach Toomey, like he said, it's always, always about urgency kind of go, go, go. And so he, he talks about, you know, having tempo during your warm up, kind of going quick, chasing ground balls out of the crease, sprinting back in, you know, quick resets. Um, you know, if you're kind of just making a save and throwing it back and kind of taking your time getting set. Yeah, it definitely works for some people. And, I'm I'm not going to say there's anything wrong with that for sure. Um, but for him, you know, and how he coaches us, it's kind of just always on the go and mm -hmm. getting our heart rate up and kind of just jumping head first into it. And that's just our warm up. And then we'll go into live shooting, um, which again, you know, we'll start with a ball You say, we'll say, you know, there's four goalies. We'll each start with a ball kind of on the side of the crease and we'll just kind of throw it over the top, you know, sprint or jog. It's only five yards away, but kind of run into the goal make a clean save, go to the other side, you know, other goalies will go Then we'll start from the other direction, throw it over the top, come in make a save. We'll do that three or four times each side. Again, getting the heart rate up, just kind of get, honestly, get you into the practice, so to speak. And then we'll end that session usually with, we step with some variation of shooting drills for like two or three minutes. So we'll do that stuff. And then coach again, similar to my high school coach, a lot of stick work. We'll jump in stick work drills with defensemen. Um, we'll usually then do some kind of energy drill, which is always hard because we're, it's always some variation of a three on two or a four on three or a five on four, six on five, mm -hmm. which, you know, usually you're not getting shots on the run. You're getting step down shots with good angles that are decently close. So not, not necessarily an easy time to be a goalie. And then from there, it's kind of a, you know, crap shoot. We'll do, you know, six on six or we'll work on clearing or specific elements, but I, I attribute a lot of my success so far, at least to the difficulty I would say of the beginning of practice, you know, on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday basis for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for that detailed breakdown. Uh, it's cool. Really cool to hear that. Um, you mentioned being like loving the film. Um, are you watching yourself or is it, or do you also watch shooters? Both. I, I, I watch, I watch a lot of film. Um, I like for my, I don't, I try not to overanalyze myself, but you know, I like to, to see, okay, you know, am I coming off the pipe a little early here? Or cause sometimes I look and I'm like, Oh boy, you know, that's coach is going to get on me for that one. You know? Um, mm -hmm. So just, just, you know, being disciplined that I love, love to watch film, the clearing game, kind of see how teams ride oh, and stuff yeah. like that. Um, and, and, you know, maybe an attack when it, it uh, again, I'm a little nitpicky, but does this attack when watch a shot, you know, can I, can I get, can I get it behind this guy after he takes a shot? Um, and I definitely watch a lot of shooters film, you know, I'll shoot, you know, it's so hard. Kids, kids ask me, you know, or, or kids, I coach, I love coaching. They'll, they'll ask, you know, how do you watch shoot, you know, shooters film? Cause guys don't shoot in the same spot. And in high school, there might be guys that have strong tendencies where it's like, okay, if you're overhand, you're shooting low in college. It's not that simple, but I like to look more at like, okay, if this guy's on the run, where does he typically like to shoot it from? Because if you watch a lot of times, if they're big, say, lefty sweepers, they like to let their shots go by a certain kind of dimension on the field. So, you know, when can I be ready for a shot? Mm -hmm. Does he shoot it? You know, does he try to bring it near side or does he try to push it? You know, um, if he drops his hands, does he generally keep it low or does he kind of bring it high? Stuff like that. Um, so I, I watch a little bit. I watch a lot of film, but I would say. I think it's equally important to watch both, you know, on shooters film and goalies film and your own film. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Um, earlier, you mentioned a great, a great quote about like leadership talking about like, it's, it's not, you know, when you first arrive, it's not your team. Right. And I a hundred percent agree with that. Like you can't, you know, as a, as a leader, you know, as a freshman, you can't come in there and start like, you know, you got to earn it. You got to earn right. it, right? You earn that respect and you earn that trust and you earn that leadership. Uh, do you feel like it's your team now? Yeah, I think so. You know, it, it takes time. It, it, it takes time. It's not, you got to think, especially as a young goalie, any, any freshman goalie or rising here, I guess, senior goalie, who's going to be a freshman, 
you know, it's, you have to almost approach it, you know, like you chose them, right. They didn't necessarily choose you, so to speak. And that, that's at least how I kind of looked at it. And that helped me kind of buy into what they need and what they do. And now, of course I'm lucky because I think loyal, you know, coach has such a great culture here. You know, it's, it's a great culture to buy into, mm -hmm. um, but you've got to buy into whatever, whatever's been happening there, you know, and once you do that, and for some kids, it can be a couple of weeks, some kids, a couple of years, um, you know, but once you buy into that, you can then kind of make your own, do your own thing, you know, and, and kind of bring guys around you. And that's so important because coach always says guys need to trust you, you know, guys, especially guys in front of you, and if they don't trust you, then there's, there's going to be some disconnect, you know, on that end. So love it. It's, it's delicate, but you know, it's, it's something to really focus on. Yeah. Um, well, you mentioned coaching goalies. You, you love coaching goalies. Um, you know, what do you, you know, how do you go about doing that? If there's, there's a goalie that comes to you and, um, you know, they're, let's say they've been playing for a year or two, you know, how do you go about coaching that goalie? What's, what's kind of your, your philosophy there? Yeah. So generally I like, well, I, I, I coach a lot of girls goalies and I don't know how necessarily I haven't necessarily marketed in that direction, but I, I coach <laughs> mostly girls with a couple guys. So I think the first thing is, is it a guy or a girl? Because um, the position is obviously going to have similarities either way, but it's kind of a different sort of breed, I think. So they, you know, obviously what kind of side are they of that on mm -hmm. and that skill level, you know, right. Cause, cause different kids start in different spots. Um, I like to think about it as, you know, can they, can they, can they catch the ball cleanly? You know, can they, are they confident in their communication? Um, you know, uh, basically how far along fundamentally are they? And then generally, you know, I, I believe in kind of like a, um, some, like a progressive, uh, pro progress drills that are kind of progressions based on one another. And, um, you know, we'll do with my, with my kind of, I say elite goalies, but, but really good goalies, you know, generally we, we like to do different drills that work on the same thing every week. Mm. And these, you know, I think there's something to be said for doing the same drill all the time, but if you can find, you know, different drills or different ways to work on the same concept, that's going to throw a lot of different variety sort of in, in working and improving that aspect, if that makes sense. It so makes, to makes total sense. Yeah. Yeah. So if like, so if a goalie's struggling, you know, getting, you know, maybe to their off hip, right. In a straight line, getting that top hand to their off hip in a straight line, you know, we'll maybe we'll start, we'll maybe start them one week on their knees and, you know, just shoot here and they've got to focus on doing that in a straight line. And then maybe the next week we'll have them play with, you know, just their bottom hand, you know, even if it's with just choking up with their bottom hand and have them work on it there. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the week after we'll go no stick, just soft toss, and they've got to use their top hand, you know, and just catch the ball with their hand. And then finally, you know, the fourth week, we'll really focus on just taking shots, you know, making the save normally. Um, so that's kind of how I look at it. And, you know, it's hard when you're coaching goalies because you can't, everyone's got their own sort of um, their own thing. And I can try to I'll recommend certain things like a stance or, you know, um, stuff like that. But at the end of the day, everyone kind of does their own thing. You can only make recommendations and everything's got to come back to helping them see the ball, you know? Right. That's what it's all about. You can you can adjust their top hand, or you can bring their their stance, their their arc a little bit higher, or you can widen their base, so to speak. But you know, at the end of the day, what as long as whatever you're doing is helping them see the release, that's that's kind of what it's got to come back to. Yeah, I love that. You know, especially when working with with youth goalies, you know, pick, get, getting some drills that keep the the variety in there and kind of keep it fresh, all while working on the same thing. I think it's very important because it's. You know, this is a this is a position of repetition, and and um, it can get. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there's day. I'm sure you've had days where you're like, man, I just don't feel like seeing shots today. Like you can you can have that, and and luckily, as you know, lacrosse goalies, hopefully those days are few and far between, but but they happen, yeah. right? <laughs> Absolutely, Absolutely. Yeah. And sometimes, especially if you're good, sometimes you, you know, if you got it, and I and I tell my girls and guys that I work with, you know, some of them, a couple of them are committed to Division One schools. I say, listen, if you know, during the summer, you know, you guys are going to tournaments every weekend and you got camp. Maybe some of you, if, if you don't want to work one week or two weeks, take, take two weeks off. We don't have to, you know, we have to meet. If you need to kind of step back and you know, lay down and not see any rubber thrown at you for a little bit, that's fine. You know, that sometimes right. that reset is really important. Yeah. 
All right, Luke, that was awesome. Uh, thank you so much for for coming on the show. I feel like we could go for a couple hours here, but uh, you know, you're a bit busy college kid, and and uh, I'll let you, let you get back to it. Um, if you had to leave the goalies out there with the final piece of advice, uh, what would that be? Ah, uh, that's just, that's a tough one. Um, there's a lot. I would say, I would say maybe I, I would say the biggest one, and I can we kind of touched on it earlier is, you know preparation exudes confidence right um confidence i think is the number one thing you've got to have as a goaltender and really any position in sports probably <laughs> um but especially as a goalie because you're not running around you know it's a thinking game you're always standing you're always thinking about something and so therefore my theory i guess is that we have the highest possibility of getting you know anxiety or getting nervous and all that stuff and i've i've heard so many goalies talk about that and for me you know my way of dealing with it since i was young yeah, you, you know, the, the more you practice, the more shots you get, um, the more film you watch, just the more prepared in general you are, the more effort you put into preparation, the less of a reason you have to be anxious, you know, or nervous. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's that what I would say would be the number one thing. And, you know, to maybe piggyback off that, watch the ball, you know, and I mean that in a sense where like if you're you think you're not seeing the ball or maybe you give up a bad goal. You know, one thing I love to do, you know, when the ball comes down, as soon as it crosses midfield or even before, I know, on, on a, when the other team's clearing, you know, just kind of, you still obviously talk to your defenseman, but just watching the ball kind of travel around, you know, watch, watch, watch it be an exchange, literally watch nothing but the ball. And it, I tell my goalies that and they kind of laugh. It sounds goofy, but sometimes by the time they go to shoot the ball, it looks like a beach ball, you know, so pro prepare, watch the ball. <laughs> Those do big things. And that's the dream, right? That's a dream that you're seeing beach balls. <laughs> that, it, you know, it's going to be a good day when you are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, well, awesome. Luke, that was tons of fun. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And good luck in the rest of the season. Uh, I'll be watching. Awesome. Thank you again. I appreciate it. Thanks again for having me on. It's a lot of fun.